Hello everyone and welcome to Sewer U, Sewer University. We're going to talk today about the history of sewers and clean water in Northeast Ohio, specifically the greater Cleveland area. I am Frank Greenland. I'm the director of Watershed Programs. This presentation is available on our website at narsd.org slash sewer U. Now I'm going to spend some time on sewer systems and I want to talk about how sewer systems evolved, the different types, the different problems, some of the strategies to remediate those problems. And this was sewage treatment back in the day, way, way back. There were no sewers locally. So people were collecting their waste in buckets and barrels and dumping their waste in the front yard, in the backyard, wherever. That was sewage treatment back in the day. And obviously that's a major public health threat. Outhouses were really hot back in the 1800s, and in some areas there's still a few outhouses. But outhouses, I guess, consolidated the waste, but was not a long-term solution. And you use an outhouse, and it fills, and now you've got to do something else. So this was definitely not a permanent solution. During the 1800s, because the city was growing, they felt you can't dump this waste on the street. That's a health threat. We've got to deal with issues of street flooding and waste on the streets, so they, we started to, they started to build combined sewers at that point. So the earliest sewers are 1800s, and really they were designed more for street flooding than anything else. Mr. Crapper had an ingenious invention back in the 1800s of, you know, using water to flush toilets and flush that waste stream away from you. Now you're using water, you're not using a bucket, so obviously the flow of wastewater, the volume of wastewater is increased, and now you have the ability to get, up, get it out of your house fast, but it's got to go somewhere. So what happened was because of the growing community and the growing waste stream, we started to connect house sewers or industrial sewers to these combined sewers, and that's why we call them combined. We're co combining two flows. One is a stormwater flow off the street. The other is a wastewater flow, sewage coming out of your house or coming out of industry. And combined sewers were the oldest sewers in the nation. It was a matter of choice. This is Mr. Herring back in 1882, public official for the city of Cleveland, who recognized that the filth of the street <laughs> alone, the filth on the street and the filth from human waste was significant enough that we shouldn't separate these waste streams, we should combine them and get them the heck away from people. So the combined sewer system was actually a matter of choice to deal with contaminated stormwater and sewage at the same time. So this region started to grow and we started to construct what, those interceptor sewers I talked about, late 1800s into about 1939, 1940. Combined interceptors started to stretch out across the region and we started to collect more waste from homes and industry. But we didn't take those, that waste to treatment plants. Those waste streams were consolidated at three points. And those three points are shown on the graphic to the right. Those were the first interceptors. They're combined interceptors. They took stormwater runoff. They took waste. But they consolidated that waste stream and dropped that waste into the Cuyahoga River in the center where Southerly is and to Lake Erie at the westerly and easterly locations. So no wastewater treatment. This is like take the waste, send it to the water body because at that time dilution is the solution to pollution or so they thought. So the, again, the interceptor sewers of the highways, it expressed that waste to the water bodies. Way back they thought this has got to be better than dumping human waste on the street. And actually it was. I got to think it was because human waste on the street is, can't be good from a health perspective. And they felt the water bodies can certainly absorb this, but we've learned over time that is not the case. That is not the case. And so what happened was back in the 20s and early 30s, the three treatment plants, those interceptors ended up at the location where our three treatment plants now exist, easterly, westerly, and southerly. And the first treatment plants, some very rudimentary, were built. And actually, I think we led in the nation in terms of starting to construct treatment plants at a very early period of time. Now I'm going to deal with the progression of how sewer systems evolved locally. Combined sewer system, the way it operates today is you're collecting stormwater runoff and sanitary sewage, homes and industry in one pipe, 
In dry weather, there's no problem. The flows are very low. But when it rains, those combined sewers fill because of primarily rooftop and, and street runoff. Devices were built in the system. We call them regulator structures. They're little weirs, little dams in the sewer that allow a lot of the flow to continue to go to our treatment plant. But these devices were sized to allow some of the excess flow to spill over the top of the weir. And that was primarily done to prevent basement flooding or street flooding. Uh, and when that flow goes over, it's not going to the treatment plant anymore, it's going directly to the environment, either directly to Lake Erie or any of the area streams in our area. And that's what a combined sewer overflow is. This really kind of shows you how this system works. We've got a side spill weir, it's a dam. To the left, the overflow pipe, a relief pipe to the right. In dry weather, the flows are low. You're actually looking into a combined sewer. And most of our combined sewers are old egg-shaped brick sewers, which is kind of neat. Low flow in dry weather, everything's going to the treatment plant. It starts to rain. The flows from the street, from stormwater runoff, get up, and those flows start to rise in that pipe until they hit what we call an SWO, a stormwater outlet. So once it hits that top elevation, it will spill over. That excess flow is what we call combined sewer overflow. And because we're talking sewage and stormwater, there are pollutants in that discharge, and they do impact water quality. A little different arrangement, perpendicular weirs or leaping weirs. Leaping weirs are kind of interesting because what you're seeing is a combined sewer coming in at the bottom, that little cut where you see some water, that's the sanitary sewer below. The sanitary sewage will drop into that pipe. When it rains, it leaps that square. And that flow that continues downstream goes to the environment. We've got a question here. Frank, do you have some way of quantifying the amount of uh, overflow? We estimate when the sewer district was created, over 9 billion gallons of combined sewer overflow discharged annually to the area waterways. We've cut it in half. In fact, I think we're about to make another incremental leap down. Today, about four and a half, a little less than four and a half billion gallons of overflow go out of the environment. The $3 billion CSO control plan, combined sewer overflow control plan, will dramatically reduce that. I don't think combined sewers are that bad, personally. When you look at the urban environment, look at the stuff on the streets. Oils, greases, junk, litter. The urban environment's got a lot of pollutants in terms of stormwater. So combined sewers I don't think are a problem. The overflows are problematic, and you need to tackle that. That's Sewer University.